Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe my channel if you do not want to miss a single lecture of this series. Today we will discuss about differential interference contrast or DIC microscopy. I hope you went through the first video of my microscopy lecture series that is the basic properties of light. If not, please go through that video before going through DIC microscopy. I am providing the link below because you need to know about polarization and interference first before starting DIC microscopy. However, I am describing it briefly here. Uh, so, polarization. Polarization is vibration of light in more than one plane. We know there are three planes, XY, XZ and YZ. A light wave that is vibrating in more than one plane is referred to as unpolarized light. The process of transforming unpolarized light into polarized light is known as polarization of light. Okay. Suppose this is the light source. Now light waves are vibrating in different planes. Hence they are unpolarized light. Now, a polarizer is placed here. This is a polarizer. A polarizer is placed here. And now, all light waves are vibrating in a single plane. So, all light waves are now vibrating in a single plane and became polarized. Interference. Interference is a phenomena in which Two waves combine to form a resultant wave of greater, lower or same amplitude. So, relationship between two waves with each other is called phase. When both the waves are at the highest peak, they are called in phase. Here, two waves act together and create constructive interference resulting in a wave of greater amplitude. Okay. So, here we can see this wave is at its highest peak. This is the highest peak. Right. And this wave is also at its highest peak. So, if we add them together, resulting wave will have a much bigger amplitude. Right. So, when one wave is at its highest peak and the other one is at the lowest, we can say uh, that they are out of phase. In that case, two waves cancel each other out and create destructive interference. So, resulting in a wave of lower amplitude. So, here we can see this wave is at its highest peak. Highest peak. And this wave is at its lowest peak. Right? So, if we add them together, they will cancel each other out and the resulting wave will have a much lower amplitude. Right? Now, one thing should be very clear that when destructive interference predominant samples appear dark against a bright background. So, when destructive interference predominates, samples appear dark against a bright background. Please remember this stuff in the in this video and till the end of this video because this is very important thing to remember. Okay. So, in the last lecture, we have studied about phased contrast microscopy. Hope you are done with that. If not, please have a look. I am providing the link in the description box. Now, DIC is similar to phase contrast microscope in that they use interference patterns to enhance contrast between different features of a specimen. The difference between phase contrast and DIC is a polarizer is added in DIC which is absent in phase contrast. So, a polarizer is added here. Right? Now, 
Now, why polarized light is important? The polarization of light affects the focus of light, configures the movement of light waves and forces their vibration in a single direction. It minimizes the messy effect due to the multiple vibrations of unpolarized light. Therefore, polarized light is a contrast enhancing technique that improves the quality of the image. That in turn gives you a three dimensional effect. The light path of DIC consists of light source, polarizer, prism, condenser, specimen stage, objective lens, prism, analyzer, and ocular lens. The process begins with non-polarized light passes through a polarizer. So non-polarized light passes through a polarizer placed between the light source and the condenser. Right? This transforms the unpolarized light into polarized one. Okay? The beam heats to the prism. It is a specialized prism that splits the beam into two beams. Okay? One beam is directed through the specimen and the other beam passes through the background. So, between two beams, one beam is directed through the specimen and the other beam, that is reference beam, passes through the background. Two beams are collected by the objective lens. So, in this objective lens, these two beams are collected. These two beams are again combined by a specialized prism into one. So, these two beams are now combined by a specialized prism into one. The combined beam hits analyzer. This is where the interference occurs that generates the differential interference contrast. The background light is out of phase with that of diffracted light by samples. It results in destructive interference that ultimately brings contrast where sample appears dark against a bright background. Different parts of the specimen have different refractive indexes and when the beams are combined by the second prism and an analyzer, differential interference contrast is formed. This is an image of yeast under DIC microscope. You can see its 3D appearance here. So the advantages of using DIC are the capacity to observe living cells, specimens that need not to be killed, fixed or stained to view under a microscope. High contrast, high resolution images will be formed. It allows thicker specimens to be observed. Samples have a three-dimensional appearance. It can be used in conjugation with fluorescence microscope to provide a better fluorescence image and to pinpoint specific areas on a specimen before switching to the fluorescence mode to further examine the object. Major limitations of using DICR, the three-dimensional image of a specimen may not be accurate. The enhanced areas of light and shadow might add distortion to the appearance of the image. Hope you understood the concept. If you liked my lesson, please do like, comment and share my video. Thank you.